Hello, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this month's Deep Dive. My name is Marcus. I'm a Customer Success Manager here at Sendable. And today's topic of discussion is all going to be about how we can uh, use the Sendable dashboard to help us prepare for some of the upcoming holidays. So as we know, we've got um, Halloween and Black Friday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, all scarily just round the corner. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we can use the Sendable dashboard to kind of help prepare content and distribute content throughout the holiday period. Before I share my screen and get started, um, just a little bit of uh, housekeeping. So um, we have a few different tabs should you have uh, any questions or the chat. So we have a, uh, in the bottom right hand side of your screen, you should see a chat option where uh, my colleague Anne has said hello. So please feel free to uh, say hello back. And to the left of the chat tab, we've got a questions tab. And that is where you can ask uh, your questions. Uh, all we ask is that you keep your questions relevant to today's uh, session, which is all about um, holidays and the sendable calendar the content library and the queues. So if you have any questions surrounding those three items, please put them in the questions tab and I will make sure we have some time towards the end of this call to go over your questions. Okay, and for those that have joined us a few times before, we you know that we like to kick things off first with a icebreaker. So that's definitely uh, an excuse to get uh, into the chat. So. Today's icebreaker, as we're talking about holiday seasons, is what annual holiday is your favorite and why? And I'll get us started. My favorite annual holiday is Christmas. Um, I, I'm from the UK, so I don't really do Thanksgiving. Uh, not yet, anyway. But I like Christmas because of all of the food. I used to get presents. I'm a bit too old for presents now. But the idea of, of gift giving and receiving is nice. Food, family, time off. Uh, the only thing I don't like about Christmas is the weather, but that is probably because I'm in London and the weather's never nice. So, uh, and is uh, New Year's Day and Christmas. Brooke likes Halloween. Why do you like Halloween, Brooke? Do you uh, do you have like kids where you can kind of dress up and go trick or treating? Um, I was never allowed to trick or treat when I was young, unfortunately. Christmas because it holds some of my favorite family memories. That's lovely, Renee. Um, same here, really. Uh, Christmas always brings the family together, which is just great. New Year's is great, Tori. Bit expensive here in London. Uh, I always prefer New Year's Day as opposed to New Year's Eve. That's my little uh, hack for everyone. Oh, we have a Resurrection Day. Oh, Easter. Yes, Giselle, that's, that's great as well. Not just because of the chocolates, but you're right. Because Jesus lives. Uh, excellent. So um, keep the answers coming in. Uh, share with each other. I think that's really good. Uh, Brooke says no kids, but she's moved into a neighborhood where you do get trick or treaters and you love handing out the candy to kids. What I like to do is give kids fruit on Halloween. You should see their faces, but um, <laughs> enough of that. And let me start to share my screen. And let's get us over here. All right. So everyone should be able to see the sendable calendar. Uh, with no content, but the first thing I want to talk about is how to utilize the uh, Sendable's built-in holiday calendar. Now, a lot of users may have seen this already, but once you're on your calendar, which is the landing page when you log in, on top of the calendar, you have a holidays checkbox. So you can actually check the holidays checkbox here, and your calendar will automatically start populating with holiday ideas. So let's switch into October. And now you can see on the calendar, lots of different ideas throughout October for many different um, holidays or social media events. So if we take a look at the 31st, you can see you've got uh, hashtag Halloween and hashtag happy Halloween. Now the good thing with all of these um, preset holidays, if you was to click on one of the thumbnails, we will actually start to give you content ideas. So you can see the hashtags are already here. And also we've got the image as well that represents the holiday. 
And by no means are you forced to use these, it's just to kind of get you started. So you can type in and around this content. And if it's content that you've created and you want to, you know, save, then you could uh, save it as a draft and have it ready or create the content and then schedule for the 31st of October. And therefore you've kind of pre-prepared that specific holiday content. But one thing that I am going to teach you today is to kind of really do more preparations. So how would you sort of store your Halloween content all in one place where you and your team members and even clients could potentially access that Halloween content and, and use it on their social media handles? Well, the way to achieve that would be to utilize what we call our content libraries. So I've gone ahead and created some content libraries. So let's close the Halloween post and we'll come back to that in just a minute. But for those that have access to content, you can head over to my content. And what I've done before today's call is I've actually created four separate content libraries. So I've hit the new library button and I've given my library a name. And as you can see on the right hand side, I've got my Christmas content, my Halloween 2023, New Year ideas and Thanksgiving. And within each of my libraries, I've got some content that can be used once it comes to Christmas time, Halloween, etc. And my content has been saved in a form of what could potentially be used as a post and some popular hashtags that match the season as well. So I broke my hashtags up into two, sort of the most popular and a secondary set of hashtags as well. So if I was to go back to my calendar and let's say uh, create a post in and around the Halloween, I could then save that content directly into this content library that I've created. So let's take a look at how that can be achieved. So let's go back to our calendar. Remember, we wanna go into October where we will find Halloween. All right, now let's imagine that I'm purely kind of happy with just having my hashtags and my image. Then I can simply select save and then I can copy this content here to a library, okay? So if I hover over copy to library, here are my four libraries that I've created, including Halloween 2023. So I can select Halloween 2023 and then give my content a name. So I'll call it, oops, uh, Oh God, um, we'll call it Halloween. Uh, and then this is gonna be my content. And I think I've got two already. So it's gonna be my content idea three, excuse my bad spelling. And then click okay. So that's giving me confirmation that this has been saved into my Halloween content library. So I can safely close this, go back to my library for Halloween. And we should see that it's saved just here. So very easy to create content and save it into one of the pre-built libraries that you've created. Now, it's very easy to create these libraries. As I mentioned, you just hit the new library button. You give your library a name. So we could, um, if we look at Giselle who likes Easter, so we can call this a Easter library. So Easter content. And then you have consumers and contributors. So as you know, you, you can create multiple dashboards within your account and you can share this library amongst your team or your clients. So anyone you set as a consumer to the, to the library will be able to view the content and hit the share button and then attach their social media handles. So I could make, I have a client called Mr. Dubs, for example, he could be a consumer. Anyone that I make a contributor will have slightly more permissions to this library. A contributor will be able to add content to my library, whereas a consumer can only read and share. A contributor can also edit and delete content as well. So a contributor is more like a collaborator with my library as opposed to a consumer who can just read and share content. They can't edit the save content, but as they decide to share the content, they could edit within the compose box. It's just not gonna change 
the, the content that was originally saved. Okay, so you can see here I've created the Easter content library, no content saved as yet. But as we know, from within our compose box, we could um, hit save and copy, and you'll see that library is now present in the list. And if you're in this view and you're actually in your library, you can actually hit the add content button here. That will give you a couple of options and different ways to add content. Social media will kind of open the compose box, same as we saw, plain text options. But you can add content using the rich text editor should you want to prepare content for blogs. That will just give you the rich text editor as well here at the top. But do bear in mind, when posting to social media channels, most of these styles are going to be ignored or stripped. And then the last option to add content to a content library is to email content in. So every library you create will have a unique email address. So this one ends in 580, but my Christmas library, you can see ends in 186. So each library you create will have a unique email address. Therefore, you could email content directly to the content libraries. Okay, so as I was mentioned, there's ways to share those content libraries. So let's take Christmas, for example. Let's hit edit. And with Christmas, we can make uh, Mr. Dubs a consumer. Remember, that means he can only share the content. And as a contributor, we'll use um, point MMA. So I just want to show you the difference between the permissions that Mr. Dubs has to the Christmas content library and what point MMA does. So let's save this. Now, me as the library owner, I can edit, I can delete the library. So only the owner of a library can delete the library, okay? Or decide who else it can be shared with. As the owner, I can add content, I can delete content, edit, and share, okay? Now, Mr. Dubs, who was a consumer, if I impersonate Mr. Dubs, he can see that he has content, a content library that's been shared with him. Christmas content by myself. But Mr. Dubs cannot add content to this library. He can to his own My Content Library. But when you are a consumer of a library, you cannot add content. So all that Mr. Dubs can do is to share this content. It's going to be available for him to hit the share button, share it as a plain text to get the compose uh, experience. And then Mr. Dubs can then select his profile and those hashtags are are there for him. Whereas Point MMA is going to have a slightly different uh, set of permissions, so still a library that's been shared with them, okay? But as a contributor, Point MMA can add content and can do a bit more with the content that has been added. So rather than just sharing, we can edit and delete as a contributor. So I hope that all makes sense. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is now we know that this content is available to us, we, you know, how do we use it? We know we can visit the library and hit the share button once you know Christmas comes around and we can share as plain text. And perhaps for Christmas, we could go ahead and schedule this content well ahead of time where we go into December and we sort of pick a date in and around Christmas where we can start to share our Christmas content which is great. That's a nice way to schedule pre-made content. So if I was to share this Christmas library with my client, my client could go in, decide which post fits their brand and their tone, and they can simply share it with their social media profiles. Right, what happens if we are in the compose box and um, we want to use that content that we have saved? Well, I can use this book icon here, which will allow me to reference any of my pre-saved content. So if I click my book icon here, what I'd want to do is navigate over to my content tab. And from here, I can actually filter by the different libraries that I've got access to. So I will filter by my Christmas content, then I can start to insert the content. So uh, I'm actually quite happy with this, uh, this one here. So I can insert my content like so. But then I'm thinking, 
I actually want to add some Christmas hashtags as well to the same post. So I can repeat the process and continue to insert more content. So back into the book icon, into the content tab. And as well as keeping Christmas free, I also want to add my Christmas hashtags too. So I can insert those. And there you go, I've got my original copy here, followed directly by my hashtags. So I can either sort of space them out a little bit if I wanted to. And then click my profile, see what my post would sort of look like on, on that channel. And just like that, I've used two pieces of pre-saved content and added them directly into my post via the Compose box. Okay, so you can do that process as much as you want until you're happy with the, the post that you're building. Right, so an alternative way of managing this type of content is to use our sendable smart queues. So smart queues live under publish and we have an area here called queues. And in a very similar fashion, let's go back to my dashboard here. In a very similar fashion to the content libraries, I've also created queues that are relevant to each of these holidays. So what I could do is rather than scheduling content, you know, months in advance, I could actually add my content to a queue. OK, so for those that are not familiar with queues and you're asking yourself, you know, what's the difference between a schedule and a queue? A queue is basically focusing within a week and it allows you to add different time slots for each day of the week. And when you add content to a queue, that content would go live at the next available time slot that you have added to your queue. So if I edit my Christmas posts here, I've intentionally gone through and removed any time slots from this queue. So anything I add to the Christmas post today, it, it won't go live because this queue doesn't have any time slots. But when Christmas comes around, I could then start to go in and add time slots for the week. And only then when the queue gets time slots, content will start to be published. So let's take a look at how that would work. Let's go to our Christmas library over here and hit the share button on one of our posts. So the first example we did is we scheduled the post for December, but the option next to the schedule is queuing. I'm going to add this post to a queue and I've got a choice of which queue I want to add. So let's add this to Christmas posts, select a profile here, and then I can add it to the queue. Okay, and let's do a few more. So you can kind of see what a queue looks like once it starts to have a lot of content. So we'll queue this post to Christmas posts, add our profile, and add Instagram in this case. Instagram doesn't like the image, so let's then go back to Facebook here. Okay, and add to the queue. And last but not least, we'll do the fox here as well. So we'll just simply get our profile in here. Let's see if it does like Instagram this time. If you are getting a, an error because of the aspect ratio, this one's too small. You can edit the image and then pick a specific uh, crop. So if I go to Instagram Square, for example, then I can maybe just focus on here and save. That should remove that error, perfect. Now remember, this isn't gonna change the original image. This was just me updating it for this instance of it being shared. So then I can scroll down and add this to a Christmas post queue. So I've just gone and added three posts from my Christmas content library to my Christmas queue. So let's head back to queues and kind of see what that looks like. So I've actually got an, a message to pop up to say, you know, there's no time slots in this queue. So currently this is considered paused. So, which is totally fine. I've got all my Christmas content in the queue that I want. And when I'm happy for this queue to start delivering this content, I can edit this queue and then I can go through the days of the week 
and actually decide, you know, when I'm comfortable for content to be published. So let's say I could go to Friday. I can select any time slot on a Friday. So let's go for 10 a.m. And if I hit save, what that means is that every Friday at 10 o'clock, one of these posts that have been queued up will go live. And if you add more than, you know, one time slot on a Friday or throughout the week, the queue would respond to those time slots. So we add one time slot on a Friday, we've got three posts queued up. So in essence, that is three weeks worth of content, one post a week on a Friday. So hit save and the queue has responded. So the next post is due to go out on Friday the 29th, followed by Friday the 6th, followed by Friday the 13th. So very easy to take your content, decide whether you want to schedule that holiday content, or if you want that content to then be live in a queue, and then that queue would only post the content determined on the time slots that you've added, okay? You can view your queue content also on your calendar. So if we go back here, now the calendar defaults into scheduled, so bear that in mind. But if you do move to the right, you will have queued. You can then select which queue you're interested in seeing, Christmas posts, and then you can see the first one is set to go live on Friday, followed by a couple of Fridays in October. And you can toggle those other holidays on and off uh, as you decide is fit. So just a quick overview on how you can use your content library to prepare content for your different holidays, whether it's Christmas, Halloween, New Year's, Thanksgiving, or anything you like. Content library is a great place for it to be stored. Content libraries can then be shared, remember, with any of your team members and clients that you'll find in these lists. Therefore, your clients and team members can take advantage of the content as well. And we also looked at how you can take this content and either schedule it by sharing and scheduling, or by taking the content and actually adding it to a queue. So you have your schedule versus your queue. And if it gets to sort of Christmas or the holiday season and you just want to share it, then you can actually just hit the send now button and it would publish directly. And anything that you share, you publish will remain saved in your content library if you needed to use it again and again. Cool, right. I'm just going to check to see if there's any questions. Um, you're welcome, Nakia. Is, uh, I'm glad you found it informative. Let's see if there's any um, questions here that I can help you with. Oh, so we've got Horst Sanja. How, how are you doing, Horst? Nice to uh, see you again. Is there a way to share content from the library to people that are not on Sendable? That is a good question. The answer directly is no. But for those that know me, you know that I like to uh, have a workaround of some sort. So how would I have a workaround of this? Let's... Um, Let's go to the, the queue here. So I've added stuff to uh, a potential empty queue. So if I actually go Friday and remove that time slot, then I've got my sort of posts available in this sort of queue that doesn't have times. If I have my content like this, then I could select these posts and I could actually export them as a CSV and then I can send that CSV to someone that's not on Sendable to kind of give them the idea of the content that I'm using. That would then contain the copy and the image as a link that they can engage with via the CSV. So that would, that would be uh, one way um, that you could uh, extract those posts, okay? But not directly from the content library. Uh, Leone had a question, is there a way to change the region country for suggested holidays? Another good question, when we put the holiday calendar together, we try to use like our global hat. So no, there isn't a filter on, you know, whether it's a British or an American holiday. We've just used all holidays on this calendar. So I hope that is, uh, answers your question, Leone. And then another question from Constantina. Uh, I did not really understand the difference between scheduled content and a queue. 
you're not the first one so i'll definitely go over that again so when you're scheduling content you can schedule content weeks and months ahead so when we open the compose box and we click the schedule calendar here this icon you can schedule content months if not even years ahead of time okay so that's scheduling when you add content to a queue those queues so let's jump into queues here you add content to a queue you can either add it to an empty queue like we have here we've paused but if it's not an empty queue we're only really looking at the next week i can't add something to a queue for it to go live in a month's time if the queue has time slots let's say a random time slot on a tuesday then those posts are going to be pushed out when we get to that time slot which is at least once a week okay so that's the main difference between scheduling which is great for you know planning for weeks or months ahead and a queue is really good should you know that you want to push out content at a set day and time every week then you can just happily add your content to a queue sit back and know that for once uh, a week that this content is going live and you can add you know more and more time slots so if i add a, a time on monday as well just randomly that's now two time slots in a week one on monday one on tuesday my queue would respond based off that so the next available time slot is monday then tuesday then monday again so i hope that answered your question there um feel free to get any more questions in while we have a few minutes uh just check in the chat again you're welcome, Leonie. I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, a lot of people do ask the difference, you know, why, why would I queue things or uh, as opposed to scheduling? But I hope that does answer your question. It's all about focusing on the week you're in. So as I mentioned, you know, for Halloween, that might be a good time to then start to add time slots, you know, towards the end of October. Uh, Leonie says she's, she's explained it to the team in this way. Scheduled is one specific time assigned for the post. The queue is a lineup of content that uploads during assigned times, but you don't control the specific slot per post. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention, actually, if you do have multiple posts to in your queue, like I do here, you can actually drag and drop the uh, post order. So should you think, oh, this post, I want to be the first one of my queue, you can actually drag it to the top and that would then take the first position. If you are <clears throat> comfortable with any order, then we actually have the option here at the top to just randomize the order of posts in a queue. And if you'd like to deliver these posts throughout, you know, the whole of December, for example, then when you are editing your queue, we have the option to recycle messages. So if I turn this on, then what will happen is we would publish these three messages. And then we would start again and it would continuously repeat these posts until I either stop the queue from repeating or I remove the time slots, which would automatically pause the queue. OK, any more questions, guys? I hope that helps. I can't wait to see you uh, creating your content libraries adding you know, your relevant content and you know making that content available for your clients. I think it's a really, adds a lot of value if your clients can log in and then they can see that, oh, my agency has made all of this content easily available for me, whereas me as a consumer can easily just go in and uh, find the library that has been shared with me and share the content quite easily. So I think that's going to be such a big win uh, for clients that rely on you to prepare content on their behalf. All right, excellent. If there isn't any other questions, um, we are we have just hit uh, five thirty. So thank you for joining. Um, the next holiday, I think, is Halloween, but we will see you before then. Um, but, you know, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and the team. We are available at success at sendable .com. And, uh, you know, if you've got any questions that are not related to this, but you want answered, then success at sendable .com. And me and my team will be happy to help. 
All right, excellent. Uh, you welcome, John. Um, I hope that was great. Thanks again for attending, and I look forward to seeing you all again in October. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much.